Do you remember the first time you were attacked by a zombie horde? Corey Bowman does. In 2008, long before he had 1.15 million subscribers to his Call of Duty channel, Bowman was a high school student when he beat his first ever Call of Duty game, Call of Duty World at War on the Xbox 360. While the game ends its primary story in predictable fashion, with triumphant symphonies and images of valor in World War II, the end credits abruptly drop players into something eldritch and otherworldly. They suddenly see their avatar wake up in an abandoned bunker in a foggy corner of the Pacific, and that's when the title appears on screen in blood red typeface. Nazi Zombies. The objective now isn't to win the war, but survive. It was a surprise feature Bowman, better known as Ink Slasher on YouTube, remembers well. Recalling, I didn't know zombies existed in the game. You beat the game thinking it's a normal campaign. All of a sudden, it puts you into zombies. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know it was even part of the game until it popped up. Bowman's lasting impressions of the experience was also informed by vivid memories from his childhood of watching George Romero's classic Night of the Living Dead while on a family vacation. And despite it only being 2008, it was still a nascent era for social media, particularly YouTube. Bowman points out that it was a time when audiences could still be taken by surprise, because not everything was spawned ahead of time on Reddit and Twitter. It was also in the late 2000s when zombies rose from the grave as a genre du jour of the time. Movies like 28 Days Later, Shaun of the Dead, and the Dawn of the Dead remake contributed to pop culture's zombie outbreak. A couple of years after Bowman's shock experience came the television phenomenon, The Walking Dead. Since the release of Call of Duty World at War, unloading ammo into the undead has become a popular reoccurring feature that stands out amid the wider Call of Duty franchise. It's still very much present today, 16 years after its initial debut, in both the standalone Call of Duty Warzone Battle Royale spin-off and the upcoming Call of Duty Black Ops 6. But how and why does Call of Duty zombies keep coming back like a virulent infection? How can a glorified add-on feature of a blockbuster video game franchise maintain its own fandom? Longtime fans of Call of Duty like Ink Slasher tell IGN that the killer combination of the series' signature shooting mechanics, combined with the sheer visceral fun of killing zombies, means it will always be popular even when zombies have decayed from mainstream tastes. Fellow Zombies fan and actor-slash-filmmaker Stephen Ford, best known for his roles in shows like Private Practice and Teen Wolf, is equally passionate about the mode, saying, Other zombie media, I don't care about them anymore, but I will play Call of Duty Zombies every time it comes out. I know people that buy Call of Duty just to play zombies. Initially envisioned by developer Treyarch as the type of tower defense style game that was prevalent on flash sites, Call of Duty Zombies typically challenge one to four players to start out with meager supplies in a minimally protected safe zone. By killing zombies, players accrue in-game currency to obtain upgrades including better weapons and stronger defenses. This gameplay loop proved to be instantly addictive and remained strong a decade and a half after its initial debut. The creation of zombies had rather serendipitous beginnings. In a personal blog post dated November 11th, 2008, Jesse Snyder, creator of Zombies in World at War, wrote that it was all pretty much an accident. During the development process, Treyarch wanted a fun extra in the spirit of the memorable airplane level in the franchise's previous mega hit, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, developed by Infinity Ward. The studio's first idea was to let players experience the invasion of Normandy from the German side of the trenches, but the developers very reasonably nixed that idea. Later, Snyder revealed that someone pointed out that the animation of Japanese soldiers being dazed by rocket strikes looked like zombies. Separately, Snyder was interested in subverting the series' expectations about survival and resolution, as he explained on his blog, saying, I still really like the concept of being overrun and not really being able to win. One thing that is common in most 
Call of Duty games is the feeling that you're invincible, that when things go wrong, you'll be okay, and that everyone lives to see the next day. Snyder pitched to Treyarch producer Dan Bunting the idea of a tower defense minigame because the concept was both addictive to play and easy to put together. Snyder thought doing their own version would be a pretty big hit. Buntin passed on Snyder's idea, but Snyder was sure it could work. The final piece came when a fellow designer introduced Snyder to a flash zombie defense game, The Last Stand which Snyder wrote about on his blog saying, Zombies run towards you and start tearing at a large barricade that is protecting your area. If they break through, you're pretty much toast. So you move around in your little section of the screen shooting various guns to try and keep them from breaking in. The rules are pretty standard for a tower defense game. After every round, you get some points which you can spend on building back your barricade, looking for survivors, and looking for a new weapon. So depending on how you play, you might choose to get a new weapon or more people to help you defend, or simply build up your defenses. So, I played a few rounds and had a huge epiphany. In IGN's original review of World at War, critic Jason Ocampo described zombies as a fun little arcade mode that's complete with item stores and power-ups. The value of what you're getting is very good for the asking price, and Treyarch did a very admirable job with this game. After its inclusion in World at War, Zombies returned as a more robust cooperative feature in the 2010 game Call of Duty Black Ops, with more maps and different characters. One of the maps is the Pentagon, and players control historical figures John F. Kennedy, Richard Nixon, Robert McNamara, and Fidel Castro, whose off-the-record negotiation session is interrupted by a zombie outbreak. It was a stark contrast to Call of Duty's tonally serious presentation of geopolitical conflict in its main story campaigns, with zombies almost always taking on a satirical grindhouse movie vibe. Hollywood celebrities like Bruce Campbell, Ron Perlman, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Jeff Goldblum, and many more have lent their likeness as player avatars. Although zombies are no longer the red-hot subgenre in the wider culture, zombies continues to be a Call of Duty staple. It's regularly resurrected to tremendous fanfare, with many appearances in title games like Call of Duty Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, World War II, Vanguard, and in every installment of the Black Ops sub series, including Black Ops 6. Ford, an avid player of zombies since Black Ops, believes there's an elegant simplicity that has contributed to its lasting appeal. Combined with the series' signature fine-tuned shooting mechanics, the targets being zombies lets players indulge in guilt-free violence. He also adds that zombies are a palate cleanser that jolts the player after experiencing heavy storytelling in the main game. Add in, the thing with Call of Duty is that they get big and bombastic, very Michael Bay, with geopolitical intrigue. It gets very intense. Zombies, on the other hand, is like blowing off steam. Bowman offers his own insight on how Zombies still keeps fans' attention, saying, when they integrate it with a good story and good characters, that's what pulls me in. When it first started, it was a mystery. It threw you in and you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on while there's all these zombies. That was the part that pulled me in. As Ink Slasher, Bowman says that he sees players always intrigued by the connections between the main story and the zombies mode. Noting, the thing I focus on with my channel is the story of the game, and between the campaign and the zombies, there always tends to be this gap. People ask if things are canon. I think they do that with zombies. They leave things open-ended so they can try and figure them out. That's how it started getting its own cult following. After 16 years, Call of Duty continues to experiment with zombies. Neither Bowman nor Ford knew what to expect of the upcoming version, except that they'll try it out. But they do have certain expectations, as Bowman explains. I think it's important for games to do something new. It's just, when you have something that's been a staple like this, and you mess it up, the cult following is going to be very angry. For Ford, speaking about zombies' ongoing popularity, he thinks a lot of it is down to nostalgia. Add in, most of us playing COD now were in our 20s and 30s. We played zombies when we were pretty young in this golden era of gaming. It's nostalgia for this time when the game was huge, when zombies were huge, and staying up till 4am with no responsibilities. Combine that with the challenge element, let's get to level whatever. It's why we keep coming back. It's comforting. Every year we get a new Call of Duty, and there's always something people complain about. But we go to zombies and go, it's zombies. It's the way it's always been. We couldn't have put it better ourselves. For more videos like this one, make sure to watch our 20th anniversary special on how Call of Duty reinvented the first-person shooter.